Hey guys, welcome back to NS5 Tips. Maybe some of you have wondered where is the main function of our Swift apps. In Objective C, we have a clearly defined main function, but here in Swift, it's no longer exposed. How can we access it? Is there a way to perform some logic before our app starts? In this video, we'll have a look at exactly this. How to write top-level code in our Swift apps. In addition to that, I'll show you one practical use case of top-level code. We'll make a jailbreak detection. A pretty simple one, but still you'll get the idea of why the top-level code is useful. We will make a function that will check whether our app is running on a jailbroken phone and call it before our app launches and if jailbreak is detected, we will crash the app to protect the user from entering sensible data, maybe uh, data that may be stolen later from attackers. Think banking apps. Let's start. All right, guys, so here we are on my computer. Let's start by creating a new Xcode project. Again, a sim single view application. I'll test it. I'll name it uh, top level code sample, but the name really doesn't matter. Oh, and as you have not may know, that's the main entrance of the app, the app delegate. This is where you can think of the interface with which the operating system can talk to you. It can say, give you events for when your app is active, when it's inactive. By now, you should already know these things and maybe use some of these methods. However, there's one specific keyword that we will have a look at currently. It's this thing here. Add your application main. This keyword uh, pretty much helps com the compiler know where the entrance of the app is, where the code has to start executing. Uh, yeah, there's nothing to be executed here, but the compiler catches that this class is app delegate and registers registers it as uh, the delegate of the current app it starts the event loop as usual so it you can say that this combination pretty much does what the main function in objective c environment does if you have noticed there you have a main function that uh, instantiates a UI application uh, object with the function UI application main and fires the event loop. It's the same thing. How you can achieve the same setup on Swift uh, environments, like in Swift projects? You can do this by creating a new file which has to have a really specific name. The specific name is main dot swift that's the file that you have and now if i'm trying to build the project i'll switch the device i'll go here if i build it the compiler will complain it will say oh you can't have two entrances of the app here it is your application main attribute cannot be used in a module that contains top level code. Top level code pretty much means the place where the execution starts when your process launches. It's this thing, it's this file. Think of it as if you are inside a function. Pretty much you can write statements here one after another that will get your app going, but first in order to make it work, we have to delete this keyword first. Yeah, and now if you pick a device, let's say I would pick iPhone 5S, and if you try to launch the app with no code in the main function, you will see that right on the app launch, 
the app is uh, killed straight away it's because the process finishes as it starts there uh, think of it as if our main function has no statements in it and the process exits straight away so here it is one more time it opens and closes it's not in the oh it's in the app switcher actually so the process did not exit uh, the way it's supposed to exit but nothing happens so how you launch your app normally from this top level code you have to import UI kit here in addition to foundation maybe foundation headers will be available from UI kit let's give it a try UI application main you have to call this function with parameters as follows command line arc c command line args v principal class name you should pass new and it will uh, inherit the name of the application as it's set in the project and here uh, you can pass a string with your app delegate class like, like app delegate but better use this function any string from class pass the class here that you want to make an app delegate like that and what this guarantees you is that every time when you if for some reason you switch your name of the app delegate class this uh, will still work because you will edit the class maybe with the help of the rename in Xcode and it will be renamed everywhere not the string won't change if it's just a string so if you launch our app from here now you will see that it it should uh, behave normally because this is what the at your application main tag does when it's set on top of the app delegate yeah here it is the app runs as normal it's just that it's empty it doesn't have anything so what you can do with this top level code why do you need it exposed imagine you have to do some work before the app launches and you want to do it in a protected way let's say you want to do a check whether your device is on which the app is running is jailbroken or it's not here is the perfect place to do that uh, right before you create a UI application main call and by the way this function never returns if you read its documentation this is what you will see even though an integer return type is specified this function never returns so once you reach the state that's it pretty much the execution here will never continue so if you do something like this let's say if uh, phone is jailbroken or maybe a guard statement guard is not jailbroken else return your app like uh, it's just an idea you know i will not implement it but if you do something like this your application will crash on its launch straight away not giving uh, the possibility for a user to enter his personal data and uh, be attacked by hackers at later time and had his data stolen somehow it's just you're guarding the app launch so i've seen this implemented in several banking apps in uk and as well as some bulgarian banks too are doing it so that's a good way to protect your app uh, let's uh, build now like a simple protection against jailbreak and see it in action i'll quickly gonna write some code here so uh, bear with me i'll be i'll try to be as fast as possible and i'll cut the video 
so that you won't have to wait. Uh, okay, so I'm done typing the code. Here's what I've did. So basically I have added a C function that will check, uh, that will list all of the dynamics libraries that are loaded and we'll check whether some of them, whether at least one of them has this name, mobile substrate. That has to be substring from its name. If it has it, that means the phone is jailbroken. This is what our check is. This, that's what our assumption is. And basically, why I'm checking for this, it's because that's a framework that is really common on all jailbroken phones. It gets loaded with every within every process or app that is launched so it makes sense for us to check for that and if we find it then uh, we don't want the app to continue launching how we're how we should use this then that's my uh, header file I have the function template here and I have also added a bridging header to this project so that I will be able to call the C function from within a Swift code. So let's go back to our main and instead of this, let's type this thing. It's jailbroken. That's our function. And in, in case it is, let's exit the process like that. That's it. It's that simple. This will make our app crash only on phones that are jailbroken. Let's see what will happen now if I try to, try to run it in the simulator. The app runs just fine, just like before. However, let's see what will happen if I run this app on a jailbroken device. So I have connected my jailbroken phone and I have it shown in QuickTime. As you can see, it has Cydia installed. So the phone is jailbroken. Watch what would happen now if I try, try to launch this app. So the app launches and crashes straight away. As you can see, let's put a breakpoint here and see what will happen in which way we'll go let's run it again so here we are in the breakpoint let's see what will happen in which direction we'll go oh we got inside the exit statement so the phone has indeed loaded this library and we've passed from here returning true for the job broken state and the app is killed and the user's data is safe at least he's not able to enter data that would be stolen that's all for this video guys in regards to the jailbreak checking that i've showed you in here in this video you should know that there are many other ways in which you can perform similar checks and unfortunately there's not a unified way from which you can say yes the device is jailbroken or no and that's because it's always a cat and mouse game here with developers and attackers so you should use every trick that you know to prevent uh, to pre preserve the data of the users and protect your app there are uh, several file system checks that you can make uh, also just like the check that i have showed you uh, for availability of dynamic frameworks some of them let's say some frameworks are available only on jailbroken environments if you check for those and if you find a such framework that means you're running on a jailbroken phone uh, in addition to that you can also write uh, protections against your process being run in a debugger and uh, unfortunately there was a simpler method that Apple provides with one defined macro by them however it was patched and now pretty much every tool 
can jump over it. So there's a safer way but to do the same behavior. However, you have to know a little bit about assembly language and how you can incorporate it in your iOS apps. I will make a video later about all those jailbreak detection things and how you can do your best to protect your app against attackers. But uh, for now, that's enough. I'll leave you some links in the description below where you could read for yourself if you're interested how these, uh, what are these checks and also why this uh, main .swift file trick works. Then uh, keep in mind that these are explanations from Apple how Swift initializes its, uh, like how it starts the execution of the process and why this file is so important, main.swift. You could have a read for yourself, but yeah, that's it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.